I'm Brian Scordato, and this is the Idea to Start a Podcast brought to you by Tacklebox. We accelerate ideas into real companies through the Tacklebox membership, and we think through startup strategy every Wednesday on the Idea to Start a Podcast. You're here because you're thinking about an idea, or you're ready to launch something, or you already launched something and you're running full steam ahead. We're here to help with the counterintuitive stuff. On to it. Today, we're going to speak to a hyper-specific person in a hyper-specific moment. If you listen to Idea to Startup, you're almost certainly a year-end reflection nerd. Don't worry, I am too. So you probably did a vision exercise that ended with a mantra you printed out and put on your monitor or a set of 20 reflection questions, or maybe you just swallowed Atomic Habits whole. All of those things are great. Any reflection is better than none. At the end of this reflection, you probably vowed to make more time for your startup idea. This episode exists to help you keep that time. Because the important part of making time for a startup in your life is planning for the moments when the plan breaks, what we call the failure state. Whatever system you develop, holding 6 to 7 a.m. each day or Saturday mornings or whatever, it'll break more than it'll work. Your startup idea is never going to be the top priority in your life, so the second your kid gets sick or your husband has a dentist appointment or your boss needs something, That more urgent thing will sop up your startup idea time like a piece of Italian bread sopping up a nice bolognese. Then you'll beat yourself up for not working on your idea, which oddly makes it more likely you'll miss the next couple of scheduled work slots, and then you'll start associating working on your startup with discomfort, and humans only have one consistent core drive, and that is to avoid discomfort. And that will be the end of your startup idea. So we need to design a system for that failure state, one that helps us immediately get back on track with as little willpower as possible. We need to create the conditions for a startup to naturally occur during your normal life. I had a trainer in high school that used to always talk about failure plans. When you missed a workout for whatever reason, you had to have a plan to make it up that day because you'd never get that day again. If you were sick, he had an ankle and wrist mobility routine you could do on the couch. If you had a school project, there was a 15-minute routine you could do after brushing your teeth that night. The system was designed for the breaks. We spend an enormous amount of time at Tacklebox thinking about this, how to help our founders build resilient internal systems while they have a job. Today, we'll go through one of the methods we use and three of our favorite tactics. And because it's way more fun this way, we'll pull in an example of a person with an idea who reached out the other day. So let's get to it. Here's the email, with permission, of course. Hey Brian, I've got an idea that I really want to pursue, but I'm a consultant. Then it says in parentheses, quote, not at Deloitte. Editor's note, I love that we've turned a whole group of people against Deloitte for absolutely no reason. It continues. I've got three kids all under six. I've also got two dogs, a wife I love spending time with, and my dad who lives with us and needs a little bit of looking after. My weekends are for kids' sports and kids' parties. My nights are for sleep. My mornings are for my kids. So it's busy, but I have an idea I love, and I need to figure out how to fit it in. Here is the premise. When men get into their late 30s and 40s, their muscles start to deteriorate. You naturally lose about 8-10% to of your muscle mass each decade if you aren't strength training. This leads to so many problems down the road for men in their 50s and 60s and beyond arthritis and chronic pain and all the debilitating health issues that start popping up from not being active. Most guys don't realize this. If you never strength trained in your 20s and 30s, you are fine. You just kept your baseline. But then that changes. So I want to start a weightlifting program for dads in their 40s that aren't weightlifters, are intimidated by weightlifting, and definitely don't want to be like shredded. But this is for dads who want to be healthy for their kids for the long haul. I learned about this three years ago. I'm 45 now, and I got a trainer who works out with me once a week in person and plans two other workouts for me to do at home each week. I'd never lifted a weight before, but this has been transformative. I feel way healthier and my doctor has noticed. My heart health has improved and I've lost weight. So I want to help other men do this to make it less intimidating. How the heck do I fit it into my life? Well, my friend, you start by planning for the failure case. And you'll do it with a little help from a successful banker and Jack Bauer. And we'll figure that out after a little smooth jazz. 
Idea to Startup is brought to you by Tacklebox, an accelerator for people with ideas and full-time jobs. If you aren't sure what to do next, we've got a step-by-step process that's helped people build tons of businesses worth lots of money. It's got 25 hours of content, examples, and templates, all organized in a tight seven-block path. If you get stuck and need feedback, I meet with founders personally every other week to organize sprints and help with tactics and approach. If you get lonely, we've got a bunch of other founders building alongside you. They're talented and driven and all in absolute delight. I handpick each one. If that's interesting, apply at gettacklebox.com. And to sweeten it, Code Holiday gets you 50% off your first month until January 5th. Back to it. Sell the position. Early on, startup ideas fail because founders lose momentum. Your job, then, is to make sure that you don't lose momentum, that you hold time for your startup. This is much more complicated than it seems because it's not like you have extra time lying around. We're all goldfish who have grown to the size of our tank. So you need to learn my favorite method, sell the position. Sell the position comes from an interaction I had at my wedding a few years back. We had a reception the night before the wedding, and during it, I noticed a family friend standing alone in the corner. I'd known this person for a while simply as my parents' most successful friend. I knew they'd risen from the lowest ranks at a bank to eventually run the place, but I'd never heard how exactly that happened. A combination of one too many old fashions and the weird celebrity status you get at your own wedding led me to walk over and find out. After some normal pleasantries, I blurted out, So, I've always been curious. How'd you get all the way to the top of the bank? Was there something you did that no one else could? In retrospect, this is a really tough question to answer, but the answer came back immediately and kind of cryptically. Sell the position. I remember nodding and trying to figure out if I was supposed to know what that meant, but luckily they followed with the story. After a few years of grunt work, I was given a small team on the trading side of the house. My team was responsible for making money. The way they made money was through investment strategies, buying stocks or a basket of stocks or some other financial instrument, that they felt was undervalued. When those positions were doing poorly, they'd have to defend them to me, and they would, tooth and nail. They paused to take a dramatic gulp of cab. They always swore this tanking position was about to turn because of this reason or that. My job was to decide whether to give them more leash or to cut bait. For a long time, I'd listen to each pitch and make a case-by-case decision, and our team performed fine, middle of the pack until I came up with a better strategy. Every time they defended a position that was tanking, I told them to sell it, to go back to their desk and sell every dollar of whatever they were defending. Then I told them to go home. In the morning, if they wanted to buy back what they'd sold the day before, they could, and they wouldn't have to defend themselves to me or even give me a reason. But 95% of the time, they wouldn't. Selling the position had broken the spell. They'd suddenly have a bunch of money at their disposal, and they could see all the other potential strategies clearly. With unlimited options, they almost never chose the thing that they'd owned the day before. Our team consistently outperformed because humans overvalue what they already own, and they get emotional about it, and we were able to remove that bias. You might recognize this as loss aversion, and it's where you start. You are, almost certainly, overvaluing a bunch of stuff you do simply because you already do it. Selling the position is your opportunity to look at everything you do objectively and decide if, with all other options on the table, you'd choose to keep doing it. Here's how it works. For our friend with the 40-year-old weightlifting club, which I haven't thought of any punny names for yet, but I promise you I will by the end of the episode, step one is life inventory. What exactly do you do now? I suggest keeping a journal and tracking everything you do for a week or two, literally everything. When you send a text message, when you check emails, when you speak with people, on and on. Then take out two big pieces of paper. On one, list everything you do now. That is your old life. The new blank piece of paper is your new life. Choose what you'd like to bring over from the old life and drop the rest. Some of this you'll be able to do easily. Others you'll need to build systems for. After our friend did this, they mentioned that they spent way too much time on their phone. So they could try the apps that created boundaries to certain types of usage. Or, I suggested, they could do what another Tacklebox member facing the same problem did and get rid of their iPhone altogether. 
this person bought a light phone, a phone with no apps or email, to see how it would go. They said that there's some inconvenience, maybe an hour a week, but overall, it saves them about two hours a day from social media, so it's clearly worth it. The key to the systems you build is to never rely on willpower. Sure, you could try to hold yourself to 15 minutes a day on Instagram, but the smartest graduates from the best colleges of the past 10 years are all making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to ensure you waste your life on Instagram. Your willpower cannot possibly compete with that. So the best systems remove the need for willpower. They save that willpower for the emotional work you'll need to do on your startup. Everything you do each day is a choice. Make sure you choose it with all options available, not just because you've done it in the past. So the position. Now that you've created some pockets of time, here are two tactics to get the most out of them. Previously on and the five minute list. My two favorite tactics for people fleshing out the systems that'll help them start businesses on the side are previously on and the five minute list. We'll start with previously on. A hurdle you'll run into during the early days is making the most of the hour or two a day you get to work on your startup. Spending the first 15 or 20 minutes of that hour catching up on what you did last session, figuring out what you're supposed to do this session is a massive time suck. Luckily, our good friend Jack Bauer solved this problem years ago. This happens on nearly every TV show these days, but the first time I ever remember seeing it was on 24. At the beginning of every new episode, Jack Bauer's raspy voice would come onto the screen and say, previously on 24. Then they'd show you what Tony Almeida had been up to, and you'd try to figure out if him and his tiny little soul patch were good or bad. Here is how that works with your startup. Every time you finish a work session, hop onto Loom, a screen recording software I'll pop in the show notes, and spend two to three minutes walking through what you just did and why, what you need to do next, and what you're building towards. Start every session by watching your previous Loom video. This allows you to work on longer projects and tie these disparate hours together. Another tool for flipping your startup fast is called OneTab. I'll pop it in the show notes. It lets you close and open a group of tabs easily so you can transition fast into your startup work. This might seem silly, but your business will be built in the margins early on. If you have six hours a week to work, you simply cannot spend two of those figuring out where you were and deciding what to work on next. Which brings us to the five minute list. The slivers of time you gain when you decide you'll get off Instagram will immediately get swallowed up by something else unhelpful if you don't take control of them. The five minute list is the answer. Keep a list somewhere of tasks that'll take about five minutes. I use Notion, but the Apple Notes app is fine. Things you can do when you're waiting for a coffee in line at Starbucks or at the bagel shop or during commercials of the Carolina game. Things like send one cold email to X person using Y template. This is great for reactive work, stuff you don't want to waste your bigger blocks of time on, stuff you don't need to warm your brain up for. Previously on and the five minute list are two tactics our founders have gotten a lot of success from. But the key is to try lots of strategies, to treat your environment like a lab that's always evolving. Try things, measure them, move forward. Working on a startup is different from any other type of work you've ever done. Your old methods won't work. You need a new system. Do the thing. The best way to prioritize your startup is to act like you're running a business rather than messing around with an idea on the side, to convince your brain this is what you're focused on, to make it impossible not to prioritize it because you're on the hook. In short, you need to do the thing. Here is what I mean. Let's get back to our friend with the weight program I'm still really struggling to get a punny name for. Saved by the barbell? Something about dad bods? I asked ChatGPT for punny gym names for dads, and let me tell you, it might be taking some people's jobs, but it is not taking mine. They actually suggested Papa Pump Gym, Daddy Lifts, The Dad Den. Yikes. Anyway, when I asked his top priority, he talked about interviewing dads, which I loved. Then he talked about figuring out how to get a network of trainers. He'd want a professional teaching each class and wanted to figure out a nice compensation split for them. He was also trying to find gyms he could sublet from. He works in Santa Monica and thought that'd be a good location to start. But the fastest way to be an entrepreneur is to just be an entrepreneur, to do the thing. So I asked if, alongside the interviews he was running, 
what it would take to get a class of five dads a workout next week. Well, he said he need to find the people. After a minute or two of thinking, he realized that his company has a digital bulletin board and he could post something about it there. Next, he said he'd need an instructor. About 10 seconds later, he realized he could just use the trainer he's been working with the past few years. Then he said he'd need space, but couldn't he just do it in a public park or on the beach or over Zoom? The first workout, he said, would probably just use resistance bands or even body weight, so they could do it from anywhere. So he did those things, and along with interviews, he's running his first class next week. Eight people signed up, and the trainer was pumped to do it. Hey, there's a pun. And they're all paying 40 bucks. He's giving the trainer 30 of those $40 and keeping the 10 as profit. The fastest way to convince yourself you're doing the thing is always to just do the thing. Then figure out what you learned and do it again. The end. The system here is always the key. Tweaking it to make sure your life and startup aren't thrashing against each other. And if they are, figuring out the root cause so you can build a system for it. Figuring out what levers help you stay accountable and what levers help you get more done in your pockets of time. Your environment should be a testing ground. Since you've never done this sort of work before, you'll have no idea what'll get the best results. Test, test, test. And never beat yourself up for missing a day. Forgive yourself. Figure out what part of the system broke and try to fix it. Save your willpower for the uncomfortable stuff you do while you're working on your business, not to get your butt in the chair in the first place. And remember, you can always sell the position. Things that may seem radical, like getting rid of an iPhone, aren't actually that radical. You can just try it. Unfit Dad's Club? Is that funny? Ugh, maybe I am no better than ChatGPT. This was the Idea to Start a Podcast brought to you by Tacklebox. And if you made it this far, we're doing a vision workshop for people trying to start their business next year. Email team at gettacklebox.com if you're interested. Have a great week.